Hi everybody, this is Agnesa from No Sediment and today we're going to look at just a few wines with unfairly low scores on Vivino. I was recently organizing my wine fridge and since it turned out that keeping the record of my wines in a notebook was not very efficient, I decided to add all my loose bottles in the Vivino wine app. I'll be honest, Vivino has never been my favorite wine app and it's not their fault. If you want to jump directly to the wines, just skip this chapter. But otherwise, let's talk about a few things that bother me about it. Firstly, Vivino often can provide confusing information on wine prices. On many instances, wine's average price is calculated based on the information provided by the app's users. But we don't know where the specific wine was really purchased by each user. At a high-end restaurant, bar, wine shop, discounter or at the winery. Depending on this, the final price paid can vary greatly. Therefore, it might not be the best reference point to check out the price of your wine. Another thing that drives me crazy is the rating scores. Some of them are really, really, really unfair both the high scores and the low scores. Of course, there are some specific wine styles that majority of people simply will not like, such as highly tannic wines or wines with high piercing acidity. But that does not mean that the wine is bad. Another thing, and that is only my opinion, what if the wine was corked or otherwise spoiled? And whoever scored that wine didn't know it. It's not like wines on Vivino are only rated by masters of wine or masters of sommelier. And to be honest, sometimes spoiled wine is quite easy to miss. So you end up giving wine a bad score, but it was actually only a bad bottle and a subject to exchange. Again, there's nothing bad about the Vivino Vine app, and I recently decided to use it more often because I like the option to create my own wine cellar, since it is hard for me to keep the track of the bottles, especially the loose ones. But today I want to highlight some of the wines I found that have undeservingly low scores on Vivino and maybe try to understand why. All of these wines were found in my wine fridge and none of them were bought specifically for this video. 2008 Simonet Favret Chablis Grand Cru Vaud d'Azir with score 3.8. My guess would be that we like to hate large producers, and Simonet Favret certainly is one. Yet not that long ago, I tasted this specific wine in blind, and I was so impressed with the quality that I immediately purchased directly from the importer last few bottles left. It was rich, open, and inviting. I would not store this wine for long though. And the average price here, it says 31 euros and 70 cents, but it is probably higher than that. However, for a matured Chablis Grand Cru, that is a bargain, and I would be very pleased to have this wine for that price. Let's read a comment from a user who scored it 3.5. Probably good wine, but it wasn't right for the foie gras. You don't score wine that low if it's not right for the dish you selected. It's not wine's fault. Undeserved and cold. But maybe it's the age thing, because other wines from this winery are scored 4.0 or higher. 2012 Vintage Chateau Aubage Liberal with score 3.9. This chateau is part of the famous 1855 Bordeaux classification and is ranked as the fifth growth. And funny enough, it is neighboring probably one of the most famous Pouillac estates, Chateau Latour. So some might argue that there is a great potential, yet it might not be used to its fullest. This score might be due to the vintage, which is sometimes characterized by higher acidity levels, stalkier tannins, and not as much ripe as expected from a classic year. Actually, a lot of comments were quite positive, yet the scores were low. So maybe this was not the most exciting wine the estate has produced, but in my opinion, score a bit above 4 would be more fair. 2016 vintage Mount Pleasant Elizabeth Semillon from Hunter Wally, Australia, with score 3.5. I think I know exactly why this wine is scored so low and definitely undeserved. It is because of the style. 
and especially so if the wine is opened young. Hunter Wally Semillon is a quite unique wine style, which in the youth can sometimes be even described as austere, with high acidity and oftentimes neutral nose, which is not the most commercially friendly descriptor of the wine. However, despite the low alcohol levels, this one has 10%, it has enormous aging potential. And after years, these wines become amazingly expressive, on the nose showing smoky, toasty elements intervened with preserved limes and white blossom. One review actually said, not much on the nose, lemon, lime, grapefruit, lime zest, dry, high acid and light body, a bit simple on the palate. Sounds exactly right if you opened it too soon, yet it has will and power to carry on for ages. 2020 San Felice Chianti Classico with score 3.7. If you're not new to my channel, you will most likely have already heard from me about this wine. Given its price tag, I think it provides an amazing value for the money, and apparently I am not the only one who thinks so, because it has ended up in the Wine Spectator's Top 100 wines of 2022. And while this is not my favorite wine from San Felice portfolio, I'm looking at you, Il Grigio and Pugnitello, it is amazing wine for its price. It respects the local grape varieties as it is made from Sangiovese with little additions of Colorino and Pugnitello and provides freshness, zest and bright red fruits. Vivino says that its average price is around 13 euros but I have been lucky enough to find it under 10 euros. One of the user reviews said it lacks structure and power. I disagree in a way, because not all wines need power and extraction to be good. Unfairly low score, for sure. 2015 Dehesa La Granja with score 3.7. This puzzles me because I participate in the Latvian Wine Awards blind tasting with international and local wine professionals as judges. And this wine has always performed so well. If I'm not mistaken, it has even received gold medals in some years. Therefore, for me, it makes no sense that its score on Vivino is below four especially given its price tag. This wine comes from a very well-respected winemaker, Familia Fernandez Rivera, with a specially well-established name in Rivera del Duero, Tinta Pesquera. It is 100% Tempranillo, and even though one comment said that they were expecting more power, I think it has enough richness, yet it is very elegant and pleasant. These are some of the wines I noted that are way underrated in Vivino. Which wines do you think are overrated or way underrated in this app? Have you liked wine so much only to open this app and see it has a low score? And maybe that has ruined your opinion on this wine? Let me know in the comments. I have been talking about the quality of these wines and maybe you want to know what makes a good wine. So I have a video about it here.